about that. Welcome back to another episode of The Truth Behind. Uh, if this is your first time catching one of the videos or one of the episodes, uh, this is just, a, it's a series I started um, around, I want to say Halloween time, a little bit before Halloween time, and it's based on the truths behind um, some horror movies, like the true stories behind some, uh, some of the most popular horror movies that were made. Um, so far we've done stuff like Jaws, we've done, um, it's one of my favorite horror movies, the, uh, oh my gosh, I can't remember the name of the movie, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, yes, that is like one of my ultimate favorite horror movies, and we're going to jump into it today, um, I will tell you guys, today what we are going to be talking about is The Legend of Lucy and Martha Keys. Um, Chris Green, buddy, if you're watching this video, this, not necessarily in your neck of the woods, but over near your neck of the woods, um, that this happened, you might even know this story, uh, and the last time I did a stream, you were there, and I was reading about this, and it reminded me of you, so I want this, this specific episode is a shout out to Chris Green, thank you for all your support, man, I love you, thank you for everything, um, but before we get into that, uh, if you guys noticed my last stream, uh, I kind of did a, a very small advertisement. Um, and why do I have a fly in my house? I don't get it. I'm usually very... I don't like flies, so I do everything in my power to not have flies. Fl like, I hate the, the way they buzz, everything like that, and it's just that one. I must have let him in from somewhere. Anyway... I've been going in and out all morning, uh, especially prepping for this, um, just getting my mind in the right place. So, But before we do that, I did kind of a, a an advertisement the last stream I did. I believe I did Making Waves. Uh, season 4, Episode 1. If you haven't caught that, I'm going to upload it from my Twitch straight to YouTube, the entire thing, uh, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, anyway, moving on from there, I'm going to do another small advertisement. I did the last advertisement for Marshalls. Um, it's one of my favorite places to shop. They got some good quality uh, merchandise there. I highly recommend it. I had like a whole collection up here in front of the table of coffee mugs that I bought my wife. And I highly recommend going there, especially now, you know, a couple days before Christmas. If you live near Marshalls or a TJ Maxx, I highly recommend going. They got some good stuff, some excellent stuff, some perfect stuff. Uh, try, <laughs> try, <laughs> trying to get my little Trump going. Um, anyway. So the advertisement I'm going to do for you guys today is actually this shirt. This is a shirt I wear to work probably once, maybe twice a week because I absolutely love this shirt. I'll wear it and then I'll come home and wash it and I'll wear it a couple days later. Um, I absolutely love this shirt. Uh, I didn't even check the brand. I just felt the shirt and I ended up buying it because this shirt feels to me, especially after washing it with fabric softener or dryer sheets, whatever you want to use, it feels to me how the books describe Harry Potter's invisibility cloak feels. Feels like air woven into material, water woven into, you know, however you want to word it. It is an absolutely amazing shirt. I only got it for 16 bucks. Uh, you might say, oh, that's expensive for a shirt, okay? Not for this one. It's extremely durable, and no matter how many times I've washed it, it stays the same. Um, I will definitely, definitely, uh, when I do the description of this video, post uh, what the material and uh, what the brand is, stuff like that. I should have checked beforehand, but I didn't, so I apologize. But to my knowledge, you can only find a shirt like this at Marshalls. So I highly recommend going to Marshalls, uh, especially, like I said, a couple days before Christmas, you, you forgot to get somebody something, a shirt like this. Whew. To quote Sheldon from The Big Bang Theory, and you make it too, you know, uh, or, or, not to quote, to paraphrase, you know if you use too much fabric softener, it makes me sleepy. You know, this shirt, it'll make you sleepy just wearing it. It's an absolutely amazing shirt. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move on. Go shop at Marshall's. Um, the Legend of Lucy and Martha Keys. This is uh, the true story behind, I believe it was called The Legend of Lucy Keys. I believe that was the name of the movie it came out, I want to say, in 2006. Um, I've never seen it, but now I kind of want to after studying this. And this and, and this will be a short video. I do apologize uh, that it's not going to be as long as the other ones. It's going to be a little short, but it is kind of a sad tale. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move straight into this. 
1751, Robert Keyes moved his family to Princeton, Massachusetts. When he moved them there, he purchased 200 acres of land on the southeastern slope and pardon my pronunciation of this word, if I get it wrong, I get it wrong, but of the Wakaset Mountain. Four years later, on April 14, 1755, okay, so 1751, Robert Keyes, the dad, husband, decides to move his family to Princeton, Massachusetts on the southeastern slope of the Wakaset Mountain, all right? Four years later, April 14, 1755, uh, Martha Keyes, the mom and wife of Robert Keyes, um, sent their eldest daughters, Patty and Anna, to collect sand from the banks of Wakaset Lake, which was one mile from their family's home, or that's, I, I'm assuming now they know how far it was, but, so yeah, so send in the two eldest daughters, the, the articles I read didn't state the age of them, but if you're sending them a mile away to go collect sand, and, and that may sound weird, but I am going to say real quick, sand was uh, used as a scrubbing agent, a very common scrubbing agent in those days. Um, to go collect sand, obviously, I would say they were probably like 10, 11 years old plus. Um, especially living in the mountains where there's wild animals, stuff like that. I th And where there could, back in those days... There could have been any number of crazy people in the mountains, and they sent their daughters alone. So they had to be older, uh, like, than 10 or 11. I'm just guessing as a base age range. Um, but yes, uh, Martha sent Patty and Anna to collect sand from the banks of Wakaset Lake. Lucy, the baby, dis who was only four years and eight months old, decided to follow her sisters to the lake... And although she began her pursuit on the correct trail, she ended up getting lost. Uh, she never caught up with them and was never seen again. The townspeople, well, for, I'm not, I'm, okay, the townspeople formed search parties to search the lake, woods, and nearby areas. They even drained the lake, but little Lucy's body was never found. Now, I don't know what dad was doing. He was probably out hunting, getting some firewood. I don't know what mom was doing. She was probably hanging clothes up on the clothesline and milking some cows or something. Told the girls, hey, Patty, Anna, go get some sand. I need to finish the laundry. And so the girls go, not paying attention to Lucy. So Lucy wanders off behind him, gets lost. They tell the townspeople, hey, dude, guys, this is what's going on. We need to find our daughter. They form search parties. They drain the fucking lake. Freaking, sorry, I got to start watching my language. And nothing happens. They don't find her. And night after night, Martha would scour the woods, calling out Lucy's name. Could you imagine back then, not having the technology that we do now, but back then losing your kid in a whole town? The townspeople would show up and they would help you look for your kid. We don't have the technology we do now, so it's not... You couldn't easily track them. And f just from what I know from people that do know how to track, especially when it comes to going hunting... It's an acquired skill. Like You're either really good at it or you have to be taught how to do it and you become good at it. Um, and so back, but back then, as far as the tracking went, it was obviously a lot harder because they live up on a mountain in the woods. There's wild animals. There could be other people. You know, I mean, I know she's four years and eight months old, so her footprints would be small, but that could have easily been, you know, disappeared. Um, all right, so Martha's grief, and this is where it gets sad for me because any mother, and I'm not a mom, <clears throat> obviously, I mean, I might have the titties for it, but I'm not a mom. Um, any mother that loses her child, I don't wish that upon anyone, even my worst enemies. Losing your child is a horrific thing that nobody should ever have to go through. Parents should always outlive their children or children should always outlive their parents. There you go. Um, her grief, Martha's grief from it drove her to near insanity. Every single night she would go out and look for her kid, calling out her name, yelling out her name, crying out her name, and she would never come. I could only imagine the amount of tears she spilled over her lost daughter. Um, Robert, the dad, uh, was driven to near poverty in his efforts to find his daughter. Uh, he sold portions of their land and even petitioned the government in 1765 for financial assistance. So both parents, not just the mom, but both parents 
gave almost every ounce of themselves just to finding this girl. It, the The articles I read didn't really say anything about the sisters um, and how they felt about it. I can imagine they were just as horrified and shocked. And then throughout however many years, I would say... <sighs> Mar um, okay, so Martha died in 1786, uh, never knowing what happened to Lucy. So if she died in 1786, I'm not 100% sure. None of the articles explained when John, the dad, died. But 1786, so for almost 30 years, the eldest daughters had to live with their parents, or at least their mom, being driven to near insanity, being driven to near poverty, trying to find their little sister um i could only imagine what what the uh eldest sisters patty and anna i could only imagine what they were going through uh, but i imagine after some time they were probably like mom dad come on guys like we got to move on she hasn't come home we haven't found her and it's, so we got to move on and with Martha being driven to near insanity, I could only imagine, seriously imagine one, if not both of them saying, you know what, we need to stay here with mom and take care of her. Um, uh, moving on from there. There are some theories. There were two or three theories uh, that I read in two, and the first two that I'm going to read off as to what happened to Lucy. They were, they both, in my opinion, carry a lot of merit. Um, and either one could have happened, and I really wish we could find out what happened. But according to an article written in 1827 by Tilly Littlejohn, who was the Key's neighbor, um, Littlejohn confessed to the brutal murder of Lucy on his deathbed. Littlejohn, Tilly Littlejohn, their neighbor, had a quarrel with Robert. He said that they quarreled over property lines. Um... And again, back then, I don't know what it would have been like compared to now talking about property lines, but when you live on a mountain, I imagine that things get sketchy when it comes into terms of property and where one person can go or can't go and stuff like that. Um, anyway, so they got into a quarrel over property lines, did, uh, L Little John and Robert did. Um, he said when he spotted Lucy wandering in the woods all alone, he struck her head with a rock several times, killing her, and then concealed her body in a hollow log and went home. He joined the search party to look for her, but as the townspeople were thoroughly combing the woods, he began to fear that Lucy's body may be discovered. Little John retrieved her body and reburied it under a fallen tree, placing stones and dead leaves over it to conceal it. And in a further attempt to conceal it, he built a fire over it. Uh, and in another attempt to shift suspicion away from himself, he claimed to have seen some Indians in the area and suggested they might have taken Lucy. Lucy's body was never found even after the discovery of Tilly Little John's letter, which is now in the possession of Cornell University. So pretty much their neighbor and their dad got in a fight over property lines. Their neighbor, Tilly Little John, saw Lucy walking through the woods, hit her in the head with a rock a bunch of times, killing her, and then tried to conceal her in a hollow log. When he joined the search party he was looking for her, he realized just how thoroughly these people were searching for her. And so he decided to bury her in the ground, put rocks and leaves over her, and build a fire pit over her. Um, and the, Oh, and then in turn, he blamed it on Indians. Now, another theory, which I guess this is just as probable, that one to me, like if he's going to confess to it, then he's going to confess to it, then we know what happened. But this other theory sounds kind of plausible. Even though I would love to cast all the blame on Tilly Little John, this one sounds kind of plausible too. Many locals uh, suggest this is the most probable because they never found her body. And even after they said where she was, I guess from one article I read, and this was only in one article, so I don't know if it's true, they went and dug up the spot where the fire was for her grave and they couldn't find any bones, nothing for her body. So anyway, moving on, uh, was that a nearby Native American tribe cast, captured and fostered the lost little girl. 
Reports say that many years later, two travelers came across a white woman living among a tribe near the Canadian border who knew little to no English. Uh, she did recall living near Cousset Hill. Wakaset is classified as a mountain but looks more like a hill, and it was never confirmed whether the girl was Lucy or not. It is believed, so pretty much, uh, 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 what, what was the right word? I don't want to say explorers if it's not explorers. Travelers, there we go. So two travelers come, came across a white lady in an Indian tribe, and she described to them where she used to be from, and they it was never confirmed if it was her. I would love to think it was her and that she got out and survived, but we already have one person confessing to the murder, and so so this one seems like it is the most probable, though, from what the, uh, what was the word, locals, there you go. I was going to say nearby townspeople, but that's too many words. Um, now, it is believed Lucy and her heartbroken mother, Martha, still haunt the area they used to live in on Wakaset Mountain. To this day, locals claim to hear Martha calling for her daughter in the woods and report seeing unexplained child-sized footprints in the snow. So that is the true story of the movie The Legend of Lucy Keys. Now, whether you want to classify that as one of the best horror movies ever made up or not, you don't have to. I don't classify some of the ones I've done videos on as the best. I just do ones, pretty much I'm doing ones that I liked. I'm trying to stay away from... Uh, Lorraine Warren and Ed Warren in their cases because those are already really well known but that's the truth behind the legend of Lucy Keys. She was just a little girl who tried to follow her sisters to the banks of Wakaset Lake to collect some sand and she got lost and if you believe the first count of what happened she was taken by the neighbor and brutally murdered and then her body was hidden and concealed if you believe the second one then she survived and she lived with an Indian tribe um, you choose which one you want to believe. All in all, it's a very sad tale that she disappeared. Her mother and father were driven to near poverty. Her sisters, I, like I said, I can only imagine. Her mother driven to near insanity. Um, very, very sad thing. And if they are still haunting Wakaset Mountain, then the urban legends are true. You could hear her calling out for Lucy and you could see child footprints in the snow. Um, I want to thank everybody that, that watch, has watched my past videos and that's going to watch this one. Thank you very much for the support. I greatly appreciate it. Again, this was The Legend of Lucy and Martha Keys. Um, I, I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this. Go ahead and go watch my past videos as well. Like I said, we did Jaws, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, um, and a few others. I know we did one on Child's Play and stuff like that. I have, a few. I, have I want to say, four or five of them already up. This is going to be the next one. I'm going to upload it as soon as this is done here, guys. I, I'm hoping to be back on later streaming maybe some Rainbow Six Siege or something like that or some Titanfall 2. I don't know yet. But thank you to everybody. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter, IronGlaze89. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram, IronGlaze. And I will talk to all of you guys later, and I can't wait to do the next video. I'm so sorry it took so long to get this one done. Um, I already have another one lined up. Uh, fair warning for it, though. It can, it's a story about ghost rape and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you've enjoyed the past ones, and I hope you enjoy the next one. Take it easy, guys. I love you all, and Merry Christmas.